Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Norm De Pasquale, and I am the NDP candidate for Spadina for York. Today, we are talking about the corporate greed that is driving up grocery prices and how liberals and conservatives allowed it to happen. We're standing here today with the Loblaws behind us, where many Torontonians go to buy their food. You walk in with the grocery list and look at the till and look at your receipt and ask yourself, how is this possible? How is this so expensive? As a result, one in five Canadians are skipping their meals because they can't afford sky-high grocery prices. People here in Toronto and across Canada are tired and frustrated at paying unfair prices for basic food while big grocery CEOs are racking in record profits. This must change. That's why New Democrats are fighting to change the rules, to end the greed, cut grocery prices, and stop CEOs from ripping you off. You deserve a party with a leader that has the backbone to fight and to stand up for corporate greed. I'm happy to introduce you to the leader of the NDP who is fighting for you, not CEOs, Jagmeet Singh. Thanks so much, Norm. Appreciate you. We're so lucky to have Norm T. Pasquale as our candidate here in this, in this riding. Norm, you're an awesome voice for the people. So as Norm said, we just uh, had an example of how high those grocery prices are. We just went to shop here at the Loblaws. I'm going to show you what we bought. We bought two items. A bag of onions for $8. This bag here. Nothing special, just red onions. $8. That's almost over a dollar per onion. The next item we bought was formula, baby formula. Something that's very essential. On sale, this is over $50. Two items, $60. Essentials for families. The reality is, you know this, when you go into a grocery store and you're paying more than ever before and getting less than ever before, you know on the other side of that you're getting ripped off. You're getting ripped off because the rules have been written by Justin Trudeau and Pierre Polyev by liberals and conservatives to allow rich CEOs to rip off Canadians. And I know you feel that. You're right. This is not your fault. You're working harder than ever before but you feel like you're falling behind more than ever before. And it's because the deck, the deck is stacked against you. The scales are, are, are against you. You've got all the power in the hands of corporations and CEOs that can rip you off. And your families are feeling the price. They're feeling the squeeze. We want to change that. We want to change the rules to put people first. One example of how the rules are stacked against you, how the scale is, is so shifted against you, is behind me, we were at Loblaws when we went shopping, one of the largest corporate grocery stores in Canada. They ju we just found out that there was a lawsuit, a, a class action, where a settlement of $500 million was made in the bread price fixing scandal. But what does that actually mean? Well, first of all, large corporate grocery stores like Loblaws and big bread producers like Canada Bread colluded, worked together to jack up the price of bread, ripping off Canadians. They were allowed to do that because it was not against the law at the time. The, the laws allowed that to happen for so long. They weren't investigated. They weren't stopped. So they were allowed to rip off Canadians. You want to know how much Canadians were ripped off? To the tune of $5 billion. The rules written by Justin Trudeau and Pierre Polyev and their parties allowed uh, the, the penalty for doing that. The biggest penalty that was levied was for Canada Bread Company was $50 million. That's like if someone steals $50 from you and you only get back five cents. That is ridiculous. And it is ridiculous that people, that citizens, have to fight in court to get justice. That is not the way things should work. The rules should be there to protect Canadians. But the rules written by liberals and conservatives, by Justin Trudeau and Pierre Polyev, have allowed big corporations to rip you off. And there is no real penalties. We want to change that. We want severe sanctions, severe penalties. If a corporation rips you off and they make a benefit, like in this case of $5 billion, then we should be able to impose triple the benefit that they made as a penalty. $15 billion of fines would really deter these companies from ripping you off. That's what we're talking about. We want to change the rules so that we impose a price cap on food essentials. These companies are making record profits. They should not be able to rip off Canadians. So what we're saying is, Justin Trudeau and Pierre Poirier, you both have failed. When Pierre Polyev was in power, when conservatives in power, 
That's when the bread price fixing scandal was happening. And Justin Trudeau has seen it through and hasn't done anything to increase the penalties for these corporations that when they rip you off. So we're saying we need to have severe penalties. We need a price cap on food essentials. We need to make sure people can afford their groceries. Is that possible to happen? Now, Justin Trudeau had the opportunity, he could have done it. Uh, we had to force them, we had to force them to bring in changes to make price gouging illegal. It wasn't against the law until we forced them to change it. That's an example of how we can change the rules. But let's be clear about Pierre Paul Yev. He wants to throw fuel on the fire of corporate greed. He wants to let these corporations rip you off even more. And we know why. The corporate or the conservative party's director for the Conservative Party of Canada is a lobbyist for the largest corporation in groceries, Loblaws. So they're not going to take on their corporate buddies. They're not going to stop them from ripping you off. But we are. We have a plan. We want to take on corporate greed and lower the cost of your groceries. I'm going to do that again in French, and then I'm ready for your questions. On vient de, de faire l'épicerie avec euh, mon collègue ici, le, le candidat de ce comté, Guillaume mm -hmm. de Pasquale. Et on a acheté deux, deux, euh, deux choses. On a acheté des oignons, un sac des oignons pour 8 dollars. Et, et c'était plus de 1 dollar pour chaque oignon. Et puis, on a acheté de formules pour les bébés. Et ça coûtait plus de 50 dollars. Et c'était rabais. Mais quand même, c'était plus de 50 dollars. Deux, deux choses, plus de 60 dollars. C'est inacceptable. Mais c'est un exemple des règles que les libéraux et les conservateurs, que Justin Trudeau et Pierre Poliev ont écrites, qui donnent tout le pouvoir aux grandes entreprises. Et ces grandes entreprises comme Loblaws vous exploitent. On veut arrêter ça. On veut changer les règles pour qu'on puisse défendre les gens, on défend les consommateurs pas les profits des secondes entreprises. Et c'est exactement ce qu'on peut faire. Justin Trudeau a échoué sa responsabilité. Et il n'a pas réglé les choses. Et Pierre Poliev veut jeter l'huile sur le feu de cette exploitation. Il veut laisser ses grandes entreprises de vous exploiter. Pierre Poliev, son directrice de la campagne pour le Parti conservateur, est un lobbyiste pour Loblaws. Donc, il ne veut pas arrêter cette exploitation. Donc, on veut changer les règles. On veut dire, si vous ne réduites pas les prix des essentiels, on va plafonner les prix. On va mettre en œuvre des sanctions sévères, des pénalités fortes pour protéger les consommateurs. On peut changer les règles pour vous aider, et c'est exactement ce qu'on va faire. With that, I'm ready for any questions you might have. We'll take questions from the media and then we'll take happy to take questions first, but we're going to start with Global for their question here. Hi, Sean O'Shea with Global News. Uh, leader, I'm just wondering, you know, this, I don't think it was an admission of liability on the price fixing. It's a cash payout, basically, um, and it took almost a decade to go to work its way through. Does this just become a cost of doing business for grocery store chains like these if eventually you're going to have to pay, but along the way you can make more money than otherwise you would have? Absolutely. And that's the problem. What it's become is the penalties are so weak that these large corporations know they can just rip off people and the small fines they have to pay, especially when they're stretched out over a long time, just the cost of doing business. That's why we're saying we've got to change the rules. The rules have been written by liberals and conservatives, by Justin Trudeau and Pierre Polyev and their parties. And those rules allow for these rich corporations to rip you off. Like, this is clear. There was breathless. This is not a... This is something we know. I guarantee that we know that they actually engaged in something that's against the law. They broke the law. And in this case, crime pays. It pays for these corporations to break the law because they were able to make massive amounts of profits. Like I mentioned, $5 billion collectively. And what was the penalty for that? Well, the, the penalty through the laws, through the laws written by the government, were very minor. The biggest penalty got only $5 million in fines, like I said, five cents compared to ripping off people to the tune of $55, $50. That is, that is outrageous. And the fact that people have to go to court to get the settlement is also outrageous. We shouldn't rely on citizens having to go to court to fight for justice. That is wrong. And because it's taken so long, not an admission of guilt, like you mentioned, uh, this again shows that crime pays. Crime pays for, for corporations like Loblaws. They can get away with it, but we can change that. That's what I'm talking about. We can change that by putting in place severe sanctions. One of the examples I mentioned is what if the penalty, if you made 
five billion dollars? What if the penalties, like we proposed in a law that I put forward in Parliament, was fifteen billion dollars in fines? Then no corporation would dare rip off Canadians if they were facing that level of of jeopardy to lose fifteen billion dollars. Then we're talking about a severe deterrence that would stop these companies from ripping people off. But that's what I'm talking about when I say let's change the rules. Let's make it so that crime doesn't pay. Let's make it so these corporations can't rip off Canadians. That's what I want to change when I talk about changing the rules. A brief, a brief follow-up, please. What's a consumer to do? You were in the grocery store just now. You brought back the small basket of goods, whether it's the cost of food that way or whether it's the excessive price of the bread. I mean, people have to eat. People have to feed their families. What's a consumer to do if the bread was too expensive? Eat less, shop somewhere else. What's the solution? Well, this is a really important question. If we were talking about the price of shoes, you know, people could put off the price of buying shoes. If there was a big increase and in, in shoe companies were gouging us, people could put off buying shoes. You could say, you know what, my shoes are a bit worn out. Maybe I can go an extra year with them. But with groceries, you can't do that. There's no luxury of saying I'm going to put off buying groceries. People have to eat. And that's why I'm saying it shouldn't be on consumers. I can't expect a consumer to go up against a billionaire, a billion dollar, billion dollar corporation. We can't expect people to go up against, really, there's just five major corporations that own the majority of grocery stores you go to. We're talking about Loblaws, Sobeys, Metro, Walmart, and Costco. That's really it for most Canadians. I can't expect an everyday family to be able to do something about that. How are they going to fight back against these large corporations? I mean, luckily, some people got together and did a, a class action, but that's not the solution here. So that's what we're saying. That is our job. Governments should be defending people against corporations ripping them off. We need to have stronger rules to protect consumers, not the profits of these corporations. And really, Justin Trudeau and Pierre Polyev, that's what they've been doing for the past number of years. They've allowed these corporations to rip you off, and we're seeing the results. Record high grocery prices. That's what I want to change. People cannot do this on their own. They need to elect governments. They're going to stand up for them. You Democrats, me and Norm, we're going to fight for you. We're going to take on these large corporations and make sure they stop ripping you off. We will now take questions uh, via Zoom. Nous allons maintenant prendre des questions via Zoom. Je vous invite à utiliser la fonction « Lever la main » pour poser votre question et question de suivi. Please use the raise hand function to ask your question. I would also invite you to please speak very loudly to counter the Toronto traffic that you see in the background. So we will go ahead and start with David Aiken from Global News. Please go ahead. Hi, everyone. Thanks for taking our questions. Appreciate it. And uh, Chuck Mead, I want to take you, you're sort of near the bottom of Young Street, all the way back up Young Street to where you were earlier this week in Northern Ontario. Could I get your sense of the challenge you and other parties are facing with this radically redrawn electoral map, ridings ripped up, Indigenous communities not sure where they're going, etc. Uh, you were up there, I understand, rebuilding relationships with Indigenous communities, uh, union groups. I understand you're, what, 5,000 feet underground in a mine. Give me your sense. What's the challenge for parties like yours with this radically redrawn electoral map in the North? Thanks for the question. Yeah, so it, it is really difficult in the North particularly. There's already massive ridings. We're talking ridings that are, that are thousands and thousands of square kilometers. So we've got massive ridings already. And the new riding distribution has made them even bigger. So the riding I was just visiting, uh, Tippins James A, which will change the name, but that riding has gained a, a massive amount of more more territory to cover. And so it it is a challenge, but it's an important it's an important one. We've got to make sure we reach out to people. So we spent time speaking with indigenous communities. I met with three different municipalities and the mayors of each of those municipalities to hear from them on the ground. Met with community groups that are dealing with things like housing and homelessness. So for me, it's really important to have a genuine relationship. When I go to a community, I want to hear from the people on the ground that are working at the problems that the community is faced with. And I want to hear from, from them on the challenges and the struggles so I can come up with some genuine solutions. And and so that was the important work we did. We did go down a mine. Uh, and one of the one of the folks that were working at the mine mentioned that we were down almost 6,000 feet and said it was uh, the equivalent of like four or five CN towers deep into the earth. So uh, we've got a really robust mining industry in this country, and it's important for, for leaders to see what that's like. So I was able to go underground. I met with mining uh, community members, workers, and businesses in the past, but this is my first time going underground. So it was a pretty incredible experience. But again, this is a part of my job. This summer, I spent the time meeting with people, hearing them, so that we can come up with real solutions for their problems. And thinking of the politics of this region of the country, 
Uh, I'll put it to you. This is unlike a lot of other parts of Ontario. This is real blue orange switcher territory from Kenora right through to Charlie's riding and Timmins. Uh, you're going to be, I think, mostly trying to make sure liberals are not going to the conservative side. Paul Yev's going to be up in that part of the world next week. What were you saying to uh, mayors, voters in Northern Ontario to make sure they come to the orange team and they don't go to the blue team? Well, one of the things that was pointed out to me is that uh, Paul Yev had been up in that community a number of times, maybe four or five times. And in my one visit, I spent more time than he had spent in his four visits there, just to give you a sense of the lack of genuine interaction for Paul Pierre Polyev and how I take it seriously meet with people when I went. So that was one contrast. The other thing that I heard from people, and they were really worried, was that they need investments in their communities. They need investments in affordable housing. And they're worried that what conservatives propose and what Pierre Polyev is proposing is to cut those investments. I remember speaking with one of the, the leaders in that the municipal level, he said, what we've heard from developers is without government investment, they're going to build market homes. The market homes are just too expensive, even for people with good jobs. And I met with people who've got great jobs in the mine, but the cost for a market home is just way too high. And builders, that's what they're going to build. Market homes, luxury homes, luxury condos, that's what they build. And they can't be expected to build affordable unless there's real investment. And so they're worried that conservatives, what they're doing is going to make it even harder. A lot of these communities need investments in infrastructure. A lot of the infrastructure is aging. We saw the impacts of the climate crisis here in, on, in Toronto and across this country. We need infrastructure that's ready for not just the, the new infrastructure we need to keep up with the times, but also with the extreme weather that we're going through, we need an infrastructure that can deal with that extreme weather. So they're worried about the cuts to infrastructure. Healthcare is already a struggle in the North, and they're worried that conservatives want to cut health care. And we know that Pierre Paul Yev wants to cut health care. He wants to have the last federal minister of health. And already, that's the challenge. You know, it's a challenge here in Toronto. The healthcare system is starved by Dr. And a federal government that cuts even further is going to be in the federal government. Two things that people in Toronto are about it. We want to give them hope. There is a better option. We're going to take off the free grocery, invest in those affordable homes that you can actually afford, and make sure that we make the investments that communities need to be able to thrive. Nous allons maintenant à Mélanie Marquis avec la presse. C'est à vous. Bonjour, M. Singh. J'espère que vous m'entendez bien. Euh, le, deux questions pour vous. La première sur euh, cet homme qui s'est approché de Justin Trudeau sur une plage à Tofino. Euh, il est arrivé vraiment très près de M. Trudeau. Et euh, ça, pendant ces... Vous n'entendez pas? Euh, si vous pouvez parler un peu plus haut, je n'ai euh, pas entendu votre question. OK. Nina, je vais, je vais aller chercher un casque d'écoute puis je reviens, OK? C'est parfait. On va aller à la prochaine question, juste pour voir. We're going to go to the next question. Uh, Mickey, go ahead, from CP. Uh, thanks so much for taking uh, my questions. My first question is for uh, the leader today, conservative leader Pierre Polyev. Um, essentially pointed to the recent killing of uh, London, Ontario team Brianna Broadfoot to uh, what he says is the failure of liberal and NDP policies. He's also blaming the rise in crime to liberal NDP policies. I guess just, you know, what's your response to that? Sorry, I, we uh, we have a great location for the, the press conference, but there's a lot of sound in the background. So uh, my speaker here that we've got, I could not hear you. So I'm going to ask you maybe to try one more time. We just did a little switch up here. This might work. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, it's way oh, okay. <laughs> um, today, Pierre Polyev, uh, the conservative leader, he said the recent killing of a London, Ontario teen, Brianna Broadfoot, uh, shows that the liberal, po liberal and NDP policies are failing, and he is also blaming the rise in crime to the failure of liberal NDP policies. I just wanted to know what your response uh, to those accusations are. Well, uh, first of all, when we're talking about the opioid crisis, uh, it, it is heartbreaking that we are losing so many Canadians to that crisis. It, it is heartbreaking because these are our neighbors, these are children, these are sons and daughters. So we're losing so many lives. 
And and what I believe, what we need to do is, first of all, we got to save lives. We got to do whatever we can to, con- to ensure that we that people aren't dying. We got to save lives. Secondly, we got to make sure people get the help that they need. And finally, we got to do everything possible to get the toxic garbage, the toxic drugs off our streets. That's what I'm focused on. What I've heard from Pierre Polyev is a lot of playing politics with people's lives, uh, making not not actually focused on solutions to save people's lives, not focused on getting people the help they need, and, and not focusing on border, which the conservatives had massive cuts in staffing, so that we're up against uh, a very leaky border where there are uh, dangerous items coming into our country because of the cuts the conservatives and Pierre Polyev brought in that have not allowed for our borders to be as secure as they should be. And so I, I, I question the genuine nature of, of Pierre Paul. He, he's not serious about this. This is for him playing politics. This is for him about dividing people. We're focused on saving lives, getting people the help they need, and getting the toxic garbage off our streets. Thank you. Uh, and then my next question is for Norm. Um, you know, you ran in the last you ran in the last federal election, and you were very close to winning. Um, what I guess, what's your biggest challenge this time around uh, to ensure that you do take home the win? Across the city of Toronto, uh, yeah, we're, we're really looking at opportunities to, to show people that New Democrats are a real choice for them. Uh, they've been let down. People have been let down by Justin Trudeau. And, and I think it's important for people to know that. So I'm going to make sure Norm and, and our team here in Toronto, we let people know Justin Trudeau had the opportunity to solve a lot of the problems that Toronto is faced with, but has let you down. They have the power, but they let you down. And New Democrats have used our power to help you out. And in this next election, they got a choice. Out of touch liberals, Justin Trudeau has let you down and failed you. Or oh, conservatives who want to cut and gut the programs that people need. So I think that's out of the question for Torontonians. And then New Democrats who want to invest in solutions. We want to take on corporate greed. We want to build homes that people can actually afford. We want the housing market that works for people, not for rich developers, not for rich investors. And, I, and I'm very confident that this is something that Canadians need. This is something that Torontonians need. And with excellent candidates like Norm Di Pasquale in this riding, and with our great candidates across the, the city, we can show a real option for people that want some hope. That's what I want to give. I want to give hope to people. And we can do that. And Norm, yeah. Yeah, Norm's going to jump in. What are you going to do uh, to win in this riding? Yeah, you bet. I mean, back, even back in 2021, I was banging the drum of affordable housing. It was a crisis then. It is an even bigger crisis now yeah. with liberal and conservative inaction over the past four years. We, I am going to fight so hard for Toronto. I will be the advocate. I will fight for affordable housing, affordable living in this, you know, increasingly unaffordable riding. I will fight for you. Thank you. Love it. Love it. Thank you very much. On va réessayer avec Mélanie Marquis. C'est à toi. OK. La deuxième fois devrait être la bonne. Est-ce que vous m'entendez bien? Oui, c'est bon, bien. Merveille. OK. Il y a une bétonnière derrière vous, mais ça devrait, ça devrait aller. Euh, première question sur un, un, un homme qui a approché Justin Trudeau sur une plage à Tofino pendant que le premier ministre était en vacances avec, avec sa famille. Qu'est-ce que vous pensez de cette pratique et est-ce que ça soulève des préoccupations côté sécurité, d'après vous? Euh, je pense que ça, c'est une force de, du Canada, le fait qu'on est accessible. Euh, je me promène dans les rues et les gens peuvent me interpeller, peuvent poser des questions, peuvent dire à nous et peuvent me, euh, peuvent me féliciter pour le travail que je fais. Tout ça se passe. Je suis tellement content que je suis assez, j'ai assez euh, d'accès aux gens. Et euh, dans ce cas, Justin Trudeau a parlé avec quelqu'un. Euh, ce n'est pas, ce n'était pas une menace. Euh, le, le, la personne représente un organisme que on n'appuie pas. On ne pense pas que ce sont des journalistes. Mais euh, il a le droit de poser des questions. Et puis, puis, euh, puis euh, Justin Trudeau a décidé de, de répondre aux, aux questions. Ce n'est pas, je pense, une menace. Mais il y a des vraies menaces. Il y a des harcèlements, il y a des violences contre les politiciens euh, que je trouve inquiétants. Et on doit euh, garantir la sécurité de notre système de démocratie, et ça inclut les élus. On doit avoir des participations, des implications des gens, des questions, des manifestations. Tout ça, c'est acceptable, mais on ne doit pas avoir la violence et le harcèlement, évidemment, 
c'est quelque chose qui nuit à notre démocratie. Merci. En suivi, donc, pour euh, vous, si quelqu'un euh, vous approche pendant que vous êtes en vacances avec votre famille, avec euh, vous avez deux jeunes filles, vous allez réagir comment avec euh, cette personne-là? Si je suis seul euh, et ma famille n'est pas proche de moi, euh, c'est d'accord. Euh, si, si ma famille est avec moi et quelqu'un est agressif, ce n'est pas acceptable parce que je n'ai pas peur de moi, mais ce n'est pas quelque chose que je veux euh, pour mes, mes deux filles. Donc, ça, c'est la, la ligne. Euh, S'il y a de violence, absolument euh, des actions de comportement agressif qui, qui touchent la famille, euh, ce n'est pas acceptable. Mais euh, les gens peuvent m'approcher. Euh, souvent, ma conjointe euh, n'aime pas tous les... Euh, si on est seul et on, on veut avoir un moment euh, entre nous autres, euh, c'est difficile. Mais elle est aussi vraiment ouvert et aime le fait que plusieurs personnes peuvent prendre une selfie, donc euh, c'est pas grave. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. That was our last question. So this concludes our press conference. Ceci conclut notre conférence de presse. Thank you. Merci. Merci. Thanks so much. Thank you, Norm. You're awesome. That was awesome, brother. Thanks so much.